Hello and welcome back with another video lecture. In this video lecture, we will study and focus on HIV or Human Immunodeficiency Virus. HIV stands for H infects human beings only. It means HIV have no other host than human. I immunodeficiency virus that weakens the immune system and increase the risk of infection. And V for virus that attack the human body. AIDS is acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. Syndrome means a group of illnesses. A stands for acquired not inherited. I stands for weakens the immune system. D creates the deficiency of CD4 cells in immune system. And S for syndrome or a group of illnesses taking place at the same time. Now what is difference between HIV infection and AIDS? HIV infection is the entry of virus inside the body and the duration before sign and symptoms of AIDS is called HIV infection and AIDS. The normal rate of T helper CD4 cells is from 1200 to 1400 cells per microliter of blood. When this count decreases up to 200 T helper CD4 cells per microliter blood is called AIDS. Then the secondary bacterial and fungal infections will start like TB, candidiasis, pneumonia and meningitis. Human immunodeficiency virus. HIV infection is a viral infection that progressively destroys certain white blood cells and can cause acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. HIV belongs to a group of retroviruses called lentiviruses that from Latin lentus which mean slowly replicating virus because of the gradual course of disease they cause the virus has a number of enzymes like reverse transcriptase, integrase and viral protease enzyme. In 1981 First case of acquired immunodeficiency syndromes are reported. In 1983, the agent now known to be responsible for AIDS called human immunodeficiency virus, which was isolated and identified. As of January 1999, there were an estimated 30 to 40 million cases of HIV worldwide. The number of infected people worldwide continues to grow at an alarming rate. Then we have the origin of HIV. There are two types of HIV known as HIV-1 and HIV-2. Both HIV-1 and HIV-2 cause AIDS, but HIV-1 is caused a worldwide or pandemic and HIV-2 remains epidemic which is uh, limited to West Africa. Then we have the link between HIV and SIV. HIV is a type of lentivirus which means it attacks the immune system in similar way the SIV or semen immunodeficiency virus attacks the immune system of monkeys and apis which are a large primate that lacks a tail including the gorilla and chimpanzees. The researcher found that HIV is related to SIV and there are so many similarities between those two viruses. HIV-1 is closely related to a strain of SIV found in chimpanzee and HIV-2 is Closely related to a strain of SIV found in Suthi Mangabees, that is Cercocebus artis, is an old world monkey found in forests. So, finally, the scientist stated that SIV mutated and became HIV and then pandemic. Then we have structure or anatomy of the HIV virus. In HIV virus, the particle is spherical and has a diameter of about 1 by 
1000 mm like other viruses HIV does not have a cell wall or a nucleus the basic structure of the virus include the viral envelope which is the outer coat of the virus it consists of lipids layers that is lipid bilayer different proteins are embedded in the viral envelope that forming spikes consisting of outer glycoprotein or GP120 and transmembrane protein which is GP41. The virus lipid bilayer membrane is borrowed from the host cell during budding process or exocytosis. The blue color GP120 is needed to attach to host cell and GP41 is critical for the cell fusion process. The HIV matrix proteins consisting of P17 protein that lies between the envelope and core. The viral cores contain the viral capsule protein P24 which is sky blue color in the diagram. This P24 protein surrounds the two single strands of HIV RNA and the enzyme needed for HIV replication such is reverse transcriptase, protease enzyme, ribonuclease enzyme and integrase enzymes. Out of the nine viral genes there are three namely gag pole and ENV that contain the information needed to make structural protein for new virus particles. Now the receptors and ligands of HIV. HIV have receptors on T lymphocyte that is CD4, CXCR4 and CCR5 receptors and ligands like GP41 and GP120 which is made from glycoprotein. Now epidemiology or worldwide distribution of HIV. 79.3 million people have been infected worldwide in 2020 in which death rate or mortality rate is 36.3 million. Globally or worldwide 37.7 .7 million people living with HIV at the end of 2020. 36 million were adults and 1.7 million were children up to 14 years. 53% were women and girls infected from HIV. In 2020, 680,000 people died from HIV related causes. 7.7 .7 million HIV related deaths were the next 10 years. 1 in every 25 adults, that is 3.6% living with HIV in WHO African region. Then we have life cycle of HIV virus. Like all viruses, human immunodeficiency virus reproduce or replicates using the genetic machinery of the cell. It infects usually a CD4 lymphocyte. HIV first attach to and penetrates its target cells. After entry, HIV release its RNA which is the genetic code of the virus. For the virus to replicate, its RNA must be converted into DNA. The RNA is converted by an enzyme called reverse transcriptase enzyme or RT enzyme which is produced by HIV virus. HIV mutates easily at this point because reverse transcriptase is formed to error during the conversion of viral RNA to DNA. The viral DNA enters to the cell's nucleus with the help of an enzyme called integrate integrase enzyme which is also produced by HIV virus. The viral DNA became integrated into the host cell DNA. 
the DNA of infected cell will now produce viral RNA as well as protein that are needed to assemble a new HIV. A new virus is assembled from RNA short pieces of protein. The virus pushes or bulks through the membrane of a cell wrapping itself in a fragment of cell membrane and pinching off from the infected cell to be able to infect other cells the budded virus must mature it becomes mature when another hiv enzyme hiv protease enzyme cuts the structural proteins in the virus causing them to rearrange all the drugs used to treat HIV infection were developed based on the life cycle of HIV. These drugs inhibit the three enzymes that is reverse transcriptase, antigrase and protease enzyme that the virus used to replicate or to attach to enter the host cell. Then we have transmission of HIV. HIV is usually transmitted into the following ways number one sexual contact with uninfected person when the mucous membrane lining the vagina penis or rectum is exposed to body fluid such as semen or vaginal fluid that contain HIV as occur during unprotected sexual intercourse second blood contact injection of Contaminated blood as can occur when needles are shared or a healthcare worker is accidentally pricked with an HIV contaminated needles. HIV also can transmit through medical procedures like blood transfusion, heart and lungs dialyzer machine, inadequate sterilized instrument transplantation of an infected organ. HIV also can transfer from infected mother to a children. Transfer of an infected mother to a child before birth through the placenta, during birth, birth through the birth canal or after the birth through the mother's milk or other unhygienic handling. Now the main symptoms of HIV or acute HIV infection. When initially a man infected, many people have no noticeable symptoms, but within one to four weeks, fever, rashes and swollen lymph nodes, fatigue and a variety of less common symptoms develop in some people. The symptoms of initial or primary HIV infection last from 3 to 14 days. The symptoms disappear but the lymph node often remain in large felt a small painless lump in the neck under the arms or in groin area. As we know HIV is a lentivirus so people can be infected with HIV infection for years even several decades before developing symptoms before AIDS develop. Many people feel well although some but develop a variety of symptoms such as weight loss, fatigue, recurring fever or diarrhea and anemia. Then we have diagnosis of HIV. If you are worried that you might have been exposed to human immunodeficiency virus or the virus that causes AIDS, it is important to get tested as soon as possible. These tests include enzyme immunoassay, ICT or immunochromatographic techniques, confirmatory tests like IFA or immunofluorescence antibody assays is a traditional laboratory technique that utilizes fluorescent dye to identify the presence of antibodies bound to specific antigen, western blot, other tests include P24 antigen or viral load. 
Then we have rapid antibody test or the aura quick test. Most of the these are blood tests for HIV antibodies. Some can detect antibodies in saliva known as aura quick test. That results are available in under 30 minutes and are accurate as standard. The aura quick test can be done in home. HIV test can detect HIV antibodies in saliva. If the antibodies are present, the user swab the upper and the lower gums of your mouth, then places the sample in developer while and can get result in 20 to 40 minutes by appearing lying in the strip. You can buy them at your local store. A follow-up test should be done if the result is positive that is western blood or line immuno acid used is a supplemental test for confirmation only in difficult cases this test can be done it detects antibodies specific to HIVs and antigen on cellulose strip then we have treatment for HIV while being treated for HIV your doctor will perform several tests to monitor your health to determine when you need to start treatment and to check how well treatment is working. This include CD4 count. CD4 is a protein that lies on the surface of infection fighting white blood cells called T helper cells. The HIV targets these immune cells. To monitor the health of your immune system, your doctor will check your CD4 count. The number of CD4 cells in a sample of your blood, you should have your CD4 count tested every 3 to 6 months during treatment. A normal CD4 count is more than 500 cells per cubic milliliter of millimeter of blood. The lower CD4 count, the less your immune system functioning and the more likely you get to infections. Your doctor will probably start treatment by the time a CD4 count is under 500 cells per mm cube. If your CD4 count drops below 200 per mm cube, you are said to be full blown AIDS. Then we have viral load test for HIV. The viral load test measures how much of the HIV virus is in the blood. You want to have a low viral load because it means treatment is helping to control the virus. If your treatment is working effectively, the viral load should drop to an undetectable level in your blood. Then we have prevention for HIV. We must use a protector every time when we have sex. If you inject drugs, don't share your needles or syringe. Also don't share your razor, toothbrush or other items that may have your blood on them. Also take your anti-HIV medication according to your healthcare provider direction. If you are a mother of infected, if you are a mother infected with HIV, don't breastfeed your baby. These all are the preventions of HIV. There is no treatment, no vaccine are available in the world, but only heart, which is highly active antiretroviral therapy. This therapy suppresses viral replication within a person's body and allows an individual's immune system recovery to strengthen and regain. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment.